Hi, I'm Lucy Ellis, Senior Writer at Scriff and I'm here in Cologne at the Bio Europe Partnering Conference and today I'm joined by Niels Riedemann, CEO of InflowerX, who's going to tell us a bit more about what the company's got going on in their pipeline. Thanks for joining us today. Pleasure, Lucy. Uh, InflowerX raised 31 million in a Series C financing round earlier this year that you'll use for a product you've got in Phase 2. I wondered if you could tell us a bit more about how that's progressing. Yeah, it's progressing nicely. Um, we're very happy to be able to conclude that round. Um, we are pushing uh, four clinical phase two programs, two are running, um, and we're going to have readouts uh, in the first quarter of next year of two programs, um, and we're going to start likely two more next year. So uh, we're very busy uh, deploying the money, and um, yeah, nice progress so far. And you're working in the complement space. I wondered if you could tell me a bit more about what's different to your approach in that area. Yeah, thank you for that question. I appreciate that. Um, we, are, we spent some good 15 years now um, researching really one very interesting target in the complement space, and that is C5A. It's the small spit product, uh, the terminal complement activation when C5 gets cleaved. Um, uh, and uh, it's, it's quite interesting uh, product because um, it's about some several thousand publications about its mode of action, so it's really well understood and it's a key component in many inflammatory responses. So we, we feel this is a very hot target. Um, we have mastered the, the difficulty to specifically bind it and block it by leaving the other pathway, the so-called membrane attack complex, intact. And that's quite unique. Um, we're quite happy. It took us a while, and um, uh, we, we feel that we're leading that space, and we're, we're hoping to push it in, into market. And so what else have you got in the pipeline in that area? Well, since we focus so much on that technology, and we have pretty good IP coverage around uh, a new epitope uh, that we can bind antibodies against, um, we, we do have two more pipeline candidates in early development. Uh, one which is a more humanized form which we will develop for a different application form, more geared towards chronic application. And a third one which is an interesting just discovered by specific molecule that will allow us to not only target complement but also other inflammatory players. So a bit more space to maneuver in that area. And we need more funding to progress. I, I think every biotech company needs more funding to progress, uh, especially in our space. Yes, we do, especially uh, depending on the data we will get next year. It's likely that we can move into phase two, phase two, three progression, and for that we need more funding uh, for sure. And, uh, but I think given our technology and uh, the space we're working in, we should be able to achieve that. Definitely. And then looking further ahead, what's your long-term vision for the company? Well, we really want to be a European biotech company that brings a first-in-class product into the markets. Uh, so, you know, that's our dream. We want to bring that therapy to, to patients. That's how it all started. And uh, if we can do that, great. And we are, of course, looking at different ways to do that. We don't exclude collaborations, but um, that's our vision. Uh, we want to be leading the C5A space. Um, we feel we do that at the moment, and we want to bring that that exciting new therapy to patients. Brilliant. And if okay, I'm going to add one more question sure. to ask you a bit about competitors in that area. If that's okay. Yeah, I think the complement space in general has been uh, a great field to work in. Uh, we didn't know that when we started that back 15 years uh, on the research side, but um, Alexion obviously comes to mind when talking about complement. They've done a great job bringing the first real success story in complement. Uh, it's a C5 blocking antibody called Soliris. And there's recently been a lot of companies trying to do me too, me better approaches to, to, to block that, that player. When it comes to C5A specifically, there are not many players left. Uh, some have tried and discontinued in phase one. For example, MedImmune AstraZeneca announced back then. So we, we know only one company um, in clinical application, also in phase two, that has a, an announced anti-C5A program, and that is also Alexion. So um, it's a space where a lot of companies are actively working in. Uh, when it comes to C5A, it gets very difficult, so we feel that in this pocket, we kind of have a pretty unique uh, standing. Brilliant. Well, thank you for joining us today, and That's I hope all goes well here. for Bio Europe. Thanks for your interest. Thank you.